Diet Coke break. Diet Coke break. Sugar-free sodas exploded in popularity during the fad diet craze of the late 20th century, earning plus-sized profits by promising smaller waistlines to their thirsty customers. But one can towered above the rest, the silver bullet Diet Coke. The guilt-free soda grew so popular that in its heyday, it was more of a lifestyle product than a soft drink. So, today we're popping the tab on the cult of Diet Coke. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History Food channel. After that, please leave a comment and let us know what other diet foods you would like to hear about. Okay, hope you're ready to chug a six pack. In 1767, chemist Joseph Priestley figured out how to infuse water with bubbles of carbon dioxide, thus conjuring into existence the very idea of carbonated liquid. The resulting soda was originally thought to be medicinal, perhaps because bubbles make any liquid look vaguely sciency. But about a hundred years later, pharmacist Charles Elmer Hires made a commercial brand of root beer. Dr. Pepper hit the shelves in 1885, Coca-Cola was invented in 1886, and from there on out, soda was the product we all know and love today. By the 1950s, however, Americans were becoming obsessed with weight loss. Thus, a few companies took a crack at creating a diet soda, and in 1952, one called No Kale became a minor success with dieters. In 1955, the good people at RC Cola began test marketing a new soda called Diet Right, and by 1962, they were distributing it nationwide. The stuff was so well-liked, it quickly became the fourth best-selling soda in the country. Diet Right proved there was a mass market for diet soda, and the competitors took note. Inspired by Diet Right's success, and eager to steal that success for themselves, Coca-Cola and Pepsi quickly got to work on their own diet sodas. But just because they wanted to cash in on diet soda didn't mean they wanted to be associated with it. Both companies were afraid that the failure of a new product with their flagship name would be bad for their brands, so they hedged their bets. Coke entered the market in 1963 with a beverage they called Tab, a name chosen because it was short and inoffensive in any language. Although you shouldn't say it to any ETs, Tab is a grievous insult on their home planet. Tab was an original formula, sweetened with cyclamate and saccharin, allegedly designed to mimic the taste of Coke, but it really didn't come anywhere close. Pepsi, for their part, called its entry into the diet soda wars Patio Diet Cola, possibly because whoever came up with the name was also in the outdoor furniture business. Unlike Coke, however, once it was clear the diet soda market wasn't going anywhere, Pepsi shifted course and rechristened Patio as Diet Pepsi in 1964. Coke stuck with its tab brand, still unwilling to taint the Coca-Cola name with a word as gauche as diet, but it was a tab they should have pulled. By the end of its first year, the oddly named drink hadn't even captured 10% of the diet soda market. Diet Pepsi and Tab continued to square off in the marketplace for the next two decades, with Diet Pepsi generally dominating. Until the 1980s, when Coca-Cola finally got tired of getting their soda flattened and decided to change everything. In 1982, Fed up with seeing Diet Pepsi outselling its diet soda products like Tab and Fresca, Coca-Cola released the first new product to use the Coca-Cola trademark since the original Coke debuted in 1886, Diet Coke. Introducing Diet Coke, you're gonna drink it just for the taste of it. Just for the taste of it. Development on a Tab replacement actually started as early as 1975, a top secret project that even most Coke employees and executives did not know was in the works like Black Ops Soda. Wait, isn't that a Mountain Dew flavor? The product that would eventually become Diet Coke was a response to the company's marketing research, which showed their aging baby boomer customers were increasingly looking to cut calories and would be much happier buying something with a Coke name on it. Because, let's face it, nobody likes Tab, except Marty McFly. Give me, give me a Tab. Tab, I can't give you a Tab unless you order something. But despite bearing the Coke name, the formula for Diet Coke isn't actually based on Coke. It's based on that red-headed stepchild, Tab, with a change from saccharin to aspartame, a new artificial sweetener that was all the rage, despite controversies over its FDA approval process. Diet Pepsi's reign of terror was over. Diet Coke's reign of terror was just beginning. Yes. We seem to be down to our last Diet Coke. A gentleman is on his way to pick some up. 
just look for a black car. Diet Coke was introduced to the world with a star-studded marketing blitz powered by the slogan, Just for the Taste of It, which encouraged consumers to drink Diet Coke for its great taste, not just its low-calorie content. Coca-Cola's association with Columbia Pictures ensured that Diet Coke product placement was all over TV and movies. In a clever commercial featuring a group of office women ogling a hunky construction worker drinking a Diet Coke, made the beverage popular in the fashion industry. Endorsed by luminaries like Elton John, Paula Abdul, and Demi Moore, celebrities drinking Diet Coke became a common sight. In fact, Diet Coke got so popular so quickly, it became something of a cultural symbol, a product that embodied a determination to indulge oneself repeatedly, without any consequences. By 1983, Diet Coke was the number one selling diet soda, and the number one selling soda among women. By 1984, it was the third best-selling soda overall. By the close of the 1980s, Advertising Age magazine named Diet Coke the number one brand of the whole decade. They even did commercial tie-ins with Batman and Indiana Jones. Take that, Diet Pepsi. Over the years, Diet Coke's hardcore fans have included everyone from President Bill Clinton to President Donald Trump to President Taylor Swift. Oops, something got ahead of ourselves there. Trump is said to have consumed as many as 12 cans a day in the Oval Office. This is a very ominous looking because of the red button. What does that get you when well, you press the you red button? Well, it gets you a And Clinton downed so much of the stuff he put a can in his presidential time capsule. Yeah, presidents make time capsules, like in summer camp. The Oval Office doesn't always have to be so serious. Elon Musk, the world's richest Diet Coke addict, has repeatedly tweeted, er, xed, about his love for the beverage proclaiming that he liked Diet Coke so much he didn't even care if it lowered his life expectancy. Now that is devotion. And that level of fervor isn't unusual among Diet Coke fans. Beliefs common to members of the DC cult tend to include a rigid insistence that its taste is better than the newer competing product, Coke Zero, and that the best Diet Coke is to be had from soda fountains, especially those at McDonald's. But you might be surprised to learn that Diet Coke actually does taste different at McDonald's. We did a whole episode about it. One of the things that differentiated Diet Coke from Tab was its taste, the result of the use of aspartame. Only one problem, aspartame might not be that good for people. In fact, as recently as 2023, the World Health Organization released a report in which a committee of 25 experts concluded that aspartame might cause cancer in humans. Oopsie, that's not the kind of weight loss most people had in mind. According to the WHO's doctors, none of whom are the doctor from Doctor Who, the occasional ingestion of aspartame isn't going to kill anyone. But they argued that people who consume high levels of aspartame, like, say, people who drink large quantities of Diet Coke, should be wary. That's 144 ounces of President Fuel. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration disagreed, issuing a contradictory statement saying aspartame is not actually linked to cancer, and that the WHO wasn't changing their recommendations when it came to daily intake. The International Sweeteners Association piled on, calling the study not scientifically comprehensive. Oh, to be fair, they've got a bit of skin in the game. As to the entirely separate but no less controversial issue of whether the use of artificial sweeteners actually helps people lose weight, the jury is still out. The WHO, for their part, now recommends not using them as a weight loss aid. Long-term consumption of sweeteners is actually not protective against body weight gain. Nothing lasts forever, not even Twinkies and cockroaches. By the 2010s, Diet Coke's dominance in the marketplace had dissolved like so much carbonated foam on the top of a soft drink, leaving sales flat. The increasing popularity of bottled water was cutting into the market for diet sodas, so Coke made some changes, lest we all be doomed to a world where we only have boring old water to drink. First of all, they adjusted the shape of the can, making it taller and slimmer. Despite the fact that the volume didn't change, the company hoped the new shape would make it more popular with millennials, who we guess are really into shapes. Maybe the can is designed to more easily fit into a TikTok frame. More substantively, they also released four Diet Coke flavor variants. Zesty Blood Orange, Feisty Cherry, Twisted Mango, and Ginger Lime. Mix them all together, and we assume you get Diet Voltron. Go ahead, try it. 
it wasn't the first time the company tried expanding on the Diet Coke brand. Caffeine-free and cherry versions were released in the early 1980s. And the early aughts brought varieties like Diet Coke with lemon, Diet Vanilla Coke, Diet Coke with lime, Diet Coke with Splenda, Diet Black Cherry Coke, and several more. The can has since reverted to its original shape, but overall, the Millennial Marketing Initiative was a huge success. According to one estimate, these changes increased the value of the Diet Coke brand almost 20% in one year. Since then, Coke has also introduced Diet Coke Strawberry Guava, Diet Coke Blueberry Acai, and Diet Coke Twisted Strawberry varieties. Truly, there is a Diet Coke for all seasons. As Diet Coke success began to level off, so did its popularity with men. As a result, the Coca-Cola company went back to the lab and created a whole new drink, Coke Zero. Unlike Diet Coke, Coke Zero had the inherent advantage of being based directly on the formula for classic Coke. Sweetened with a combination of aspartame and acesulfame potassium, Coke Zero is generally considered to be closer in taste and sweetness to the real thing. Originally marketed as a men's soda, contrasting Diet Coke's more feminine brand image, Coke Zero became wildly popular with consumers. Since its introduction, it has greatly cut into the sales of Diet Coke. But Diet Coke disciples need not worry. According to the people at Coke, there's no plans to change the formula of Diet Coke or pull it from the market anytime soon. Just don't call it Tab. So what do you think? Are you Team Diet Coke or Team Diet Pepsi? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these other Weird History Food videos.